This is Memphis, Tennessee, economic capital of the Mid-South, bustling city on the banks of the mighty Mississippi River, and home of the Liberty Bowl. And these young men are University of Tennessee football players, enjoying the sights and sounds of Memphis in December, and looking forward to their December 29th Liberty Bowl game with Minnesota. This is a story of courage and perseverance, how these volunteers fought overwhelming odds to earn an invitation to the 28th Liberty Bowl. But thoughts of a bowl trip were far from anybody's mind as the Tennessee team went into November with a less than impressive two and five record, including three conference losses. Coach Johnny Majors reflects on the frustrations of September and October and the importance of November games. The first part of the season was a very frustrating period for all of us. Uh, we had to go through some distractions in the off season and some uh, publicity and some factors that we couldn't control uh, quite often. And, and then considering the fact that we had more injuries than any football team I've been around in my coaching or playing career and having a football team that lost three games by a total of three plays, uh, there were a lot of frustrations. And uh, lesser people would have probably uh, shipped it in and said, well, let's write it out because we're not going to have anything to benefit us from uh, doing a good job. But our football team and the staff took the challenge, in my opinion, in uh, making the most out of November. And, uh, you know, folks, remember what you do in November uh, more than any other area. The Vols' first seven games of the 1986 season provided few memorable highlights, but there were moments to remember, such as this 46-yard touchdown romp by Keith Davis, and this 55-yard interception return for a touchdown by Charles Davis, as the Vols win their opener against New Mexico. Junior college transfer Anthony Miller, with a little help from a friend, scores with this screen pass, racing 60 yards against Auburn for his first touchdown as a ball. Against Alabama, Jeff Francis throws the ball 60 yards. And the fleet Miller carries it into the end zone for a 70-yard touchdown strike. The Vols game at Georgia Tech was typical of their season to date, as Carlos Reves, successful on this 48-yard field goal, and a later one for 37 yards, barely missed a winning field goal as time expired. Tennessee's record is two and five, and there's visible disappointment in the Vol dressing room, as UTV's Bob Kessling talked with Coach Majors and senior Dale Jones. Tough way to lose, I'll tell you that. I thought I'd seen it again. Uh, nearly every way you could uh, lose a ball game tonight was a different way. And maybe we can get back on track, but we have no choice but to try. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll hang tight. Uh, we've still got a lot of things to look forward to and a tough schedule coming up. You know, we're just trying to stick together best we can. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to be a team and, and do the best we can. Have you ever had a season like this where it seems like just everything that could go wrong goes wrong? Well, you know, things like that's going to happen. You know, you're going to have your good times and you're going to have your bad. It's, you know, we just got to stick together and, you know, try to be the best team we can be. you got two weeks now to sort of think back and reflect and regroup a little bit, don't you? We definitely do. You know, we got to try to get back on the winning track and, um, you know, just go play and practice as hard as we can. And so the comeback gets underway November 8th, a day of homecoming on the Knoxville campus. Freshman Tracy Hayward gets Tennessee off to a rousing start with his recovery of an early fumble by the visiting Memphis State Tigers.
The opportunity's not wasted as Terrence Cleveland moves inside the state 10 with this screen pass. The Vols, who've never lost to Memphis State, draw first blood as Charles Wilson dies for the game's initial touchdown. This interception and 42-yard return by senior Charles Davis sets up a Vol field goal in the second quarter. Jim Miller, a steady performer throughout his career, scores the Vol's second touchdown, and the Tigers trail 19 to nothing at the half. Early in the third quarter, Jeff Francis hangs the ball over the defensive back, and Anthony Miller catches up with it in the end zone. It's worth another look at Francis' arm and Miller's speed. The Tigers trail 26 to nothing. Greg Amsler scores his first collegiate touchdown. Amsler talks about his opportunity to play as a freshman. Greg, as a freshman, most of them are getting redshirted now. Was there a decision on your part whether to redshirt or go ahead and play this year? No, it was really up to the coaches. You know, they asked me if I minded, and I just said, it's really up to you if you feel I should play, you know. You've had some great players, so it's really up to you. On your touchdown, on the drive, you ran the ball a couple of times and got it down to the one where you're hoping they'd call your number one more time? Yeah, sure was, yeah. <laughs> The ball's next stop is at Jackson, Mississippi, where they face the 20th-ranked Rebels of Ole Miss. This catch by Joey Klinkscales sets up a first-half field goal as Tennessee fights to overcome an early Mississippi touchdown. The Rebels hold their lead until the fourth quarter when Jeff Francis hits Joy Klinkscales with this 38-yard scoring strike. And the Vols move ahead for the first time, 15 to 10. Junior cornerback Terry McDaniel makes a leaping interception of Mark Young's pass. McDaniel's interception enables the Tennessee offense to control the ball for all but eight plays of the fourth quarter. William Howard's touchdown concludes an eight-play, 48-yard drive as the Vols upset Ole Miss 22-10 for their second win in November. The Falls returned to Neyland Stadium to host Kentucky. With a Liberty Bowl bid promised the winner, Tennessee wastes no time taking the initiative as Brian Kimbrough blocks Kentucky's first punt of the afternoon. This is not a replay. Still in the first quarter, Charles Kimbrough blasts through to block another Kentucky punt. Terrence Cleveland finally gets a handle on the loose ball, carrying it into the end zone for the ball's first touchdown. With Kentucky on the move early in the third quarter, Terry McDaniel snares this Bill Ransdell pass and returns it to the UT 31 behind ferocious blocks by Victor Peppers and Terry Brown. For the second straight week, a Terry McDaniel interception sets up a touchdown pass from Francis to Klinkscale. This time, the Knoxville senior reaches over Wildcat defender Tony Mays for the touchdown, extending the ball lead to 14-3.
the Wildcats pull to within five points in the fourth quarter when Tennessee's offense launches a 75-yard drive, climaxed by Klinkscale's second touchdown catch of the day. The Tennessee lead is now 21-9. On the Wildcats' next possession, Mark Hovannik drops quarterback Ransdell for a six-yard loss. Faced with second and 16, Ransdell is sacked again, this time by all-SEC linebacker Dale Jones. Kentucky is at Tennessee's 47 with just over three minutes remaining when Ransdell misses the handoff. That's freshman Marion Hobby in pursuit and Dale Jones sharing the tackle. The play costs the Cats 12 yards. And three plays later, William Howard finds a gap in the left side and races 32 yards for another touchdown. It's 28 to 9, Tennessee. Ransdell is under tremendous pressure as he throws into the end zone, and Charles Davis intercepts for the game's final play. It's the Vols' third November win, and their second straight SEC victory. The beer keg stays in Knoxville, and Tennessee accepts the Liberty Bowl invitation. Coach Majors has his eye on a perfect November record as the Vols invade Vanderbilt Stadium for the annual meeting with their mid-state rival. His team takes to the air early, and Miller is 15 yards behind the defender when he takes this Francis pass for the Vols' first touchdown of the afternoon. Tennessee explodes for three touchdowns in the second quarter. This one coming on a pass across the middle to Terrence Cleveland. On the Vols next possession, Jeff Francis again finds Anthony Miller and the fleet receiver races into the end zone for his second touchdown. His team now leads the Commodores 21 to nothing. Vandy is starting from its own 12 when Tony Nelson separates quarterback Eric Jones from the ball. Andre Kramer recovers for the balls at the four. And two plays later, William Howard's sweep left gives his team a commanding 28 to nothing halftime lead. The Commodores storm back with 20 unanswered points, but Howard's early fourth quarter touchdown seals the Vols' 35-20 victory and gives them a perfect 4-0 worksheet for November. The mood of post-game interviews is definitely upbeat after this win. Well, I couldn't be any proud of our team and our staff members who work with those young men, but particularly the players for the way they came back and won the final four games in a row. Things didn't look too good early in the season, but... Again, failure is short-lived. It's according to how you deal with it and how you work with it. Everybody has problems in our football team, and staff dealt with our problems very well. We appreciate the great support that our loyal Tennessee fans have shown us throughout this time, too. You know, I, I like to think that <clears throat> I always got a chance to battle back and be a winner, and I think that, you know, every person on here did give up, and, you know, we had a winning season and having a chance to go to a bowl game and even winning seven games, and nobody would have thought we'd done that after, we, you know, our start. So, uh these, it's just it's great to, to be on a team that people don't give up. Exactly one month later, the Tennessee team is facing Minnesota's Golden Gophers in the 28th Liberty Bowl at Memphis. The Vols, after forcing a Minnesota punt, employ a precise passing attack to move steadily downfield. Joy Klinkscales concludes the 13-play, 78-yard drive with two nifty moves and a sprint into the end zone. Midway through the second quarter, Gopher quarterback Ricky Foggy fumbles in the backfield. Dale Jones recovers, 
and the Vols take over at Minnesota's 46. Seven plays later, Francis fakes the screen pass and hits William Howard, who races 23 yards for a touchdown that puts his team ahead 14 to nothing. But the score is tied at 14 all. When in the fourth quarter, Jeff Francis rifles this pass to Nate Middlebrooks for 20 yards and a first down at the Gopher 46. Anthony Miller takes this Francis toss, escapes one tackle, and races 22 yards down the sideline for another first down. Jeff Francis shows his passing touch. And Joey Klinkscales grabs the soft toss for his second touchdown. And the Vols regain the lead 21 to 14. With only 22 seconds left in the game, Minnesota's third down pass is batted down at the line by senior defensive tackle Robbie Scott. Foggy's fourth down try sails incomplete. The Vols extend their season record to seven and five. Jeff Francis with 22 completions for 243 yards and three touchdowns is named outstanding player for the game. And Tennessee seniors can look back with pride on postseason wins in the Citrus, Sugar and Liberty Bowls. Coach Major summarizes the 1986 season and takes a brief look at the season ahead. We have a five-game winning streak to take us into 1987, which would give us uh, some positive uh, feelings. But I think all of us as coaches and players realize that we don't have any false optimism about the 1987 season. Uh, we have a tremendous challenge ahead of us, filling the holes that we lost in some ve very valuable players in three positions offensively and an outstanding placement kicker. Those are key spots. Plus, in my opinion, we have to completely rebuild our defensive philosophy, our defensive toughness, our aggressiveness, our techniques and fundamentals to where we can have a defense that not only slows people down more often, but stops people occasionally. And the challenge of playing a 12-game regular season schedule starting in late August against the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. Our conference schedule will be uh, difficult as, as usual. Plus, our tough non-conference schedule will give us plenty to work for in the next few months.